Welcome to the Every Step Web Recorder Advanced video. In this video, we're going to go over more advanced settings and configurations with the Every Step Web Recorder for creating more complex scripts. If you haven't watched the Every Step Web Recorder introduction video, I would recommend watching that video first to ensure you have the base information and skills covered. Let's get right into things as there's a lot we're going to cover. We're going to pick up where we left off in the last video by using the script we created for monitoring the .com monitor site. The first thing we're going to do is add some filters to the script. These will help us if we're having any issues with elements. The first way to add a filter is to right click anywhere within the script editor pane and select network filter. We have the allow, deny, or clear options. If we select clear, we will clear any network filters we might already have within our script. What we're going to do is to choose deny and in this case we're going to supply the URL for Google Fonts. What this will do for our script is it will not download any elements originating from that URL and this way ignore related issues or errors. Thus, the errors will not wake us up in the middle of the night with an alert. You may choose to add a filter like this if your site has historically unreliable CDN but you've got good backup in place. In this case, you might have a solid font stack in your code that will still not look good even if Google isn't able to serve this specific font. Once we have our parameter for our filter populated, we select Save Changes and you'll see our new network filter populated within the script. Another more advanced method of implementing a filter is to add a network response modifier. This is something you may choose to use if you have a page in which you have a lot of dynamic elements that are populating the page, but you might not have access to those elements. In other words, you're getting a 403 forbidden error on specific elements. To insert a filter for this scenario into our script, we're going to select the network response modifier OK. For our example, we're going to use the same Google Fonts URL and specify the error type is success and the error code is 403. Now our script will filter out 403 forbidden errors originating from the Google Fonts URL. The next thing we're going to look at is a scenario where you want to add a delay to your script. Remember, the idea of synthetic testing using browser emulation is to give you the most realistic and genuine examination of your site or web application. Let's say you have a large block of text that you expect the average visitor to your site will be required to read. You can add a delay to emulate the customer's actual experience and journey through and around your site. Another example where you might want to add a delay is if you have a large image that needs to be loaded or a complex query that's running on the back end. You may want to make sure it finishes rendering or returning the data set before your script continues. The easiest way to add a delay is to right click on the line in your script where you want the delay to appear as the next line here. I've right clicked on the line of our script just before step two and selected delay. You'll see that the delay was added to my script and the delay working pane was open to the right of our script. Here I can adjust the delay between one and 300 seconds. You might say, what if I need to delay longer than five minutes? You simply add another delay immediately after the one you've just created. Let's say you have a site or application in which you're not concerned about how quickly it loads a given page or how quickly any of the content renders, but you do have one particular step that you consider critical, such as logging into the site. Everything else can run as slowly as it wants except for the login process, and if the login to the site or application takes longer than 10 seconds, you consider the site to be down and unavailable. So, you need to be alerted of that issue. To monitor something such as that, we would need to insert a script time watcher. To do that, I'm going to select step three in our script and insert a script time watcher. Now the watcher is added and started right before step three. The script time watcher pane on the right of our script allows us to name the watcher and adjust the threshold between one and 300 seconds. One thing to remember when you're using a script time watcher is to add a stop time watcher as well. Otherwise, the script time watcher will continue through the rest of the script. It will assume that the entire rest of the script, in this case, will have to be done in 10 seconds. We're going to go to the last line of step three and close the watcher with the stop time watcher. Here you can see the login watcher we just created. We select it and it will stop our watcher. In addition, 
You can add a time limit for specific URLs such as CDN, which you may need to ensure the delivery of crucial content in a timely manner. You can do this with Network Time Watcher. One thing to keep in mind with some of these advanced settings such as network filters, network response modifiers, script time watchers, and network time watchers is that we want to add them to our scripts only if they are 100% necessary. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your account manager or our technical support. And don't forget to check our knowledge base online.